Hi, welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George, and today we're going to be talking about the absurdity of varying degrees of free will. Um, and what I mean by that is some philosophers, psychologists, assert that while we may not have complete free will, we have free will in certain respects. So uh, we're going to be we're going to be exploring that. Um, before we do that, I just want to go through a brief kind of like summary in terms of what we generally mean when we say that we have a free will. Okay, basically, what we're what we're saying is that like our decisions would be completely up to us. Would be like that nothing would be compelling us to to make our decisions. That like nothing. The key point is nothing that's not in our control would be either taking part in our decisions or making them for us. And you know, just right from the start, we can um, understand how because we have an unconscious that's always awake, always active, that pretty much ma makes free will impossible because. Um, well, well, we'll see um, later in the show, but the idea is that, um, you know, again, if the unconscious is, is like, is taking part in, in a decision, for example, then it couldn't be free, and if it's making the decision, it couldn't be free. And we'll, again, we'll, we'll um, go into that a bit more later. And I want to, like, I want to just talk first about, like, also why the show is important. I mean, we have, civilization has, um, has had as its premise the premise for our whole, you know, legal system, our whole political system, our whole socioeconomic system, our whole system of relating to each other personally, interpersonally, has been based on this, on this illusion of free will. In other words, on, on the idea that we can actually, like, choose, that it's up to us what we choose. Um, and so naturally, I, I, the, the premise is that... Um, it's my belief that this kind of premise, that ki this, kind of, um, this kind of understanding actually really leads to a lot of unnecessary um, harm, unnecessary problems, unnecessary confusion. And by overcoming the illusion, we can, um, we can just like create a much, much more intelligent, compassionate, and understanding world. All right, so let's let's get into this. So the idea is like, yeah, some philosophers, some psychologists, some thinkers, you know, they 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 understand how we can't have a complete free will, you know, perhaps maybe because of you know our genes, like our fifty percent of of our personality is genetic, but then they say, well, you know, all right, I can understand how we can't have complete free will, but but it seems like we have a certain amount, a certain kind of free will you know, like a partial free will. And there are two types of partial free wills that they basically refer to. One is, is the idea that um, while not all of our decisions are completely up to us, at least some of them are. You know, um, certainly we can't, um, you know. All right, and the second one, the second way that they ha um, say we have a partial free will is that when we make a decision, it's partly up to us. It may be partly, you know, up to other factors, but it's partly up to us. All right, so let's, let's examine each of these assertions. Um, let's explore them in a bit of detail to see um, whether they are logical. Okay, um, so let's, let's go with the first one. The first one is that, you know, that all, while, you know, not all of our decisions are freely made, some of them are. Okay. Here's where the unconscious comes in. Um, we've talked about this before, and it's, it, it's the answer. It's the answer to, to why, you know, even a partial will is, is not possible. Um, our unconscious is always active. You know, it, it's, it's like there's a part of our unconscious that's controlling our, our um, body actions, you know, our breathing, our heartbeat, our, you know, everything, every, all the organs inside of us, part of our unconscious is constantly awake, naturally um, controlling that. Our unconscious is also awake while we're sleeping. So our unconscious is actually more part of our experience than really our consciousness, which is maybe like, you know, 16 hours out of the day, whatever. So the idea is... Um, 
All right, first, all right, now let, let me go through a bit of, um, bit of uh, background on this. Now, as far back as Freud and the mesmerists, the hypnotists, we have understood that there is an unconscious, and we have un we've understood that the, this unconscious um, is really responsible for a lot of the decisions, and actually it could be all of them, that we attribute to ourselves. Um, and so what, what's happening in neuroscience and psychology today is they are demonstrating this. Before, you know, like with, with, with hypnosis, for example, they would like, they would hip hypnotize a person, give the person a post-hypnotic suggestion, and then, you know, after the person's not hypnotized, something would happen, like a phone would ring, and the person who had been hypnotized and given the suggestion would do something, right? W would do the post-hypnotic suggestion. And the, um, the way that they would determine that what they did was done by the unconscious and not by the person's consciousness is they would ask the person, well, why did you do that? You know, and they would give, they would make up some kind of reason, but the reason would never really um, understand that the only reason they did what they did was because they had been given that post-hypnotic suggestion while they were hypnotized. Um, there are other experiments in priming where basically, you know, um, subjects in an experiment are given some words that are going to like, kind of like cause their unconscious to focus on a certain kind of um, behavior. And then like they're, they're, um, they're kind of like evaluated conducting a task or whatever. And it turns out that that priming is really responsible for what they do or don't do. Okay, so the idea is if, um, well, first, okay, um, if we have an unconscious, and uh, no, much more importantly than this, all right, think about this. Um, when we say what we say, when we decide what we decide, we have to rely on something, on memories, you know. In, in other words, like, we can't make a decision just, like, with no data to draw, you know, in, in terms of like evaluating how we'll make our decision or, or we can't say anything with no, let's say, words in our memory bank, in our unconscious memory bank um, from which to draw for our sentences and, and phrases and paragraphs and all this. So that's the idea. Um, now remember, free will, the term free will means that uh, we would be able to make our decisions completely free of anything that's not in our control. Okay, so think about it. Um, we have an unconscious that is the storehouse of all of our memories, all of our words that we know, our reasoning processes, you know, our morality. And by definition, not only is this unconscious something that we're not aware of, we're not in control of it. Okay, there's no way we control our unconscious. So we have, in other words, we, to make every decision we make, we have to draw on an unconscious part of us that we can't control for the very words we're using, for the very, the words that I'm saying right now, they're just coming up, you know? <laughs> it's, kind of, it's kind of like what's, what's happening is that, um, you know, the unconscious is kind of like leading me to say what I say, then my consciousness becomes aware of it and wrongly concludes, you know, to the, to the extent that we believe we have a free will, that the consciousness has made the decision or has, you know, said what it said um, to begin with when, you know, again, <laughs> the reality is it's made at the level of the unconscious. Okay, so, so the idea is that um, whether we see the unconscious as, um, as controlling, you know, the, the very decision itself, as a lot of experiments and a lot of hypnosis has demonstrated, or as taking part in a decision um, that we might make, then obviously that, that shows how um, we can't have a free will. Because again, free will means that we can make the decisions on our own, completely independent uh, of everything and anything that we're not in control of. Okay? All right. Um, the second reason, the second reason why, um, why some of our decisions cannot be um, freely willed. Think about this. 
Uh, the main reason, you know, I, I like to explain this in terms of the unconscious because people are aware of this, you know, since, especially since Freud, people are, understand that we have this part of us that, that is unconscious, that's not in our control. So that's, that's a very easy way for people to relate to, to this idea, idea that we don't have a free will. But um, the fundamental reason, reason <laughs> is that, um, you know, there's a law, there's a law in, in nature, a law in physics, a law in the world called, called cause and effect. And the idea is that um, everything that happens has a cause. Okay? Um, everything that happens has a cause. Nothing can happen without a cause. This was known since Leucippus um, in about 500 BC. He said that nothing happens at random but um, everything for a reason and by necessity. Okay, and that's so true. So, like, think about it. If everything has to have a cause, that means every one of our decisions must have a cause. And then, you know, it's, you know it doesn't stop there because what happens is, like, if everything has a cause, then the cause for every one of our decisions must have a cause. And the cause of that cause must have a cause. And then what happens is then you get this chain of cause and effect, you know, because every cause has a preceding cause, and that chain of cause and effect spans back to before we were born. Okay, so you have things that are happening before we were born, before the planet was creating, in this cause and effect manner, determining exactly what's happening at this very moment and what's going to happen in the future. So how this applies to, to the, the notion that some of our, um, you know, decisions may be freely made? Well, you know, you ha that would have to explain, well, how could it be that some of our um, decisions are subject to this law of causality and others aren't? So that's, that's why, you know, that's why I say that the notion of varying degrees of free will is really absurd. It, it you know, it's incoherent, really, um, logically inconsistent. Okay, um, so now let's, let's explore the, the second notion. The second notion is that, um, that not, you know, all right, we may not make, um, that not, that, that in the decisions that we make, that part of them, at least part of them, are, um, are you know, in our control. <laughs> I actually went a little through this uh, explaining the first part. But the idea is, think about this. Um, let's imagine, imagine you are um, writing a report, raking leaves, doing dishes, doing whatever you're doing. Okay, and then there's, there's someone, something, and in this case it'll be your unconscious, who, um, who insists on taking part in that decision to do that and insists on taking part in the actual doing of, of whatever you're going to be doing. Now, if that's the case, you can't really say that, um, that either the decision to do whatever you do or the doing of it is completely of your free will. Because again, you have something that you can't control that, that is insisting on, on, um, on helping out with it. Um, and that's where the unconscious comes in. Okay, the unconscious again, it it uh, <laughs> it never sleeps. It never sleeps, and um, and to the extent that it's not making the decision completely, because I think in a lot of cases it is. You know, we're just beginning to understand that in, in neuroscience and psychology. But to the extent that it's not um, making the, the decision complete, it certainly uh, is taking part. You know, uh, again. Um, if we have to draw on the unconscious for the concepts, you know, for the, for, for the, uh, the building blocks, the words, the vo vocabulary, the memories upon which we're going to make our decision, then obviously, obviously that unconscious is going to take part, at least part, in every decision we make. Okay, um, so that's, that's, I think, the best way to, to understand it. And, and I got, you, could, you could understand the, the, um, the partial free will, that part of our free will, that part of our decisions are, are you know, up to us and part are like up to other factors. You can understand that also how that's impossible by, um, 
by basically understanding that like, all right, think about it. I mean, it doesn't make sense, but like, if part of, us, of our decisions were up to us and another part was up to something else, well, the part of the decisions that were up to us would have a cause, okay? They, they couldn't ex ex escape that law of causality that governs everything. So, the, you know, if we were to claim that part of the decision was up to us, well, what was the reason for that decision? You know, why do we make that decision? What's the cause of that? And then you have to ask yourself, well, what's the cause of that? And a lot of times, all right, when we, um, when we explore this, it's not that we, um, that we can know, that we can ever know what the causes are. Especially, I mean, if you go back three, four steps in this chain of cause and effect, I mean, like, we're just guessing as to what the causes are. But, you know, we start with this premise. We start with this premise that everything must have a cause, that things just can't happen uncaused. Okay? Um, and, all right, um, I'm going to do a show on this also, but, but think about, like, the, um, the prospect of what it would mean if, if some of our, our decisions were actually uncaused, if, if our decisions just were not subject to this law of causality that, um, that governs, governs everything. All right, well, certainly, if, if a decision of ours is not caused, if it's random, if it's indeterminate, um, it can't be a result of our free will because basically free will, when we, when we say free will, what we mean is like it's up to us and it's something we can take pride in and accountability for. And it's, it's presumably something for which we have reasons, our own reasons. Okay, so in other words, like if we do something good and we want to take credit, well, we want to do good because it was like, you know, presumably of our own free will, but because it, it demonstrates that we're moral people, whatever. So, in other words, what I'm saying is like, to assert that we have a free will would mean that the will would be free of causality or free of reasons, free of, free of any kind of reason at all, including, you know, free of the self. So, so again, that, that's actually like just a demonstration of how the, the term free will is kind of like incoherent. It just doesn't make sense. All right, so the idea is um, whether, whether, you know, psychologists, philosophers, people make um, the assertion that some of our decisions are freely willed or that some parts of our decisions are freely willed. You know, you can see that because we have an unconscious, because um, the world works ac according to cause and effect, this just, you know, it's not, it's impossible. It's impossible. Okay. Um, now, all right. So let's say we accept this. Okay, let's say ex we accept this, um, this understanding, this truth, this inescapable truth. Um, what does that mean? I mean, what would, would it mean to our world? Some people, some people actually really understand the logic and the science of how free will is impossible but they're hesitant, reluctant to accept it, in part, I guess, because sometimes we're, we're actually conditioned, very ironically, we're, we're conditioned by the causal past to actually take pride in our free will, you know, to, to actually believe we have one, and to kind of like not really want to relinquish it so easily. So, um, so that, that's part of the reason. Another part, another reason why people, you know, are very reluctant to... Um, to kind of like live their lives, to, to kind of like maybe restructure our civilization, our society according to, um, to the truth of our human will is because um, some people believe that if we, if, you know, if everybody understood that free will is an illusion and when everything is actually really faded, that we're kind of like, you know, I like to say that we're instruments of God that basically we're just doing the will of God. Um, I tend to be religious, but you could, you know, a more secular way of saying it, that is we're, we're robots. We're like computers that are programmed <laughs> to act in certain ways, and that's what we do. And people say that, well, if, you know, if people understood that, then um, civilization would collapse because, like, people would say to themselves, well, 
well, if I'm not responsible, if I'm not morally, morally responsible for anything, then I can do anything, you know, and, and you can't hold me accountable. Okay, um, we're not good. <laughs> That's not something we have to fear because, because um, one of the ways nature has conditioned us is that we are hedonic creatures. We seek pleasure and we avoid pain. Another kind of imperative, that's an imperative that incidentally just um, controls every decision we make. Um, a second imperative is that um, at the time we're doing anything, even though in hindsight or to others it may clearly seem wrong, but at the time we're doing anything, that is like what we consider to be the most moral of, of our choices, you know, the, the greatest of options, the, the lesser of, of two evils, whatever. So, so the idea is that um, society, we as, as individuals, um, we as a society, we as, as a planet would not allow um, anarchy, you know, just because people believe, you know, uh, that people understand that they don't have a free will. You know, we, we have to like, what it would mean, what, what would happen is that, uh, for example, in our personal lives, um, let's say, let's say everybody around us, all of our friends, our family, you know, everyone we know really, really completely understood um, that, um, that free will is an illusion, that, you know, basically everything's a movie, you know, we're all programmed. So, like, naturally, we are programmed sometimes to do things that upset one another, that, that hurt one another, that, you know, or offensive or aggressive or threatening to each other. I mean, like, again, we can't help that. If, if, if we had a free will, you know, I, I guarantee you we'd all be perfect angels and we wouldn't be aggressing against anyone. But, but to the extent that, you know, reality, fate, God, whatever, compels us to do these things against each other, if we all understood that free will is an illusion, that everything's um, predetermined, we would we would like we wouldn't blame each other. We wouldn't spend time. Well, you know, you were horrible. You know, you you know, inconsiderate all this stuff. We would begin to explore. Well, why did you know? Why do you think? Um, why do you think fate? You know, would do this to us? You know, because it's really an offense against both. You know, the person being offended and the person who does that. And what would happen is like with with the the notion of free will, it's like people are competing with each other, you know, against each other, you know, as, as adversaries. But when we understand that free will is an illusion, that everything's faded, then all of a sudden our friends and we are on the same side. We're no longer competitors. We're cooperating and trying to find an answer to this kind of fate that's like disturbing our relations. Okay, and you want, if you want to look at this from a theological standpoint, I mean, there's, there's this idea of Satan that that is responsible for messing stuff up on the planet and I, I i would guarantee that you know this notion of free will this illusion is probably one of the his prime um mechanisms for doing that because essentially what happens is that um you know if you have everybody at each other accusing ourselves and each other for things that we're not responsible for then we're not going to be focused on on solving the issues, you know, in the best way, in the, in the intelligent way. Okay. Um, all right. So, so that's you know the idea is, you know, we, it. I mean, th just think think for a minute how um, how amazing it is that one, you know. Our civilization, humankind, is so completely confused about perhaps the second fundamental aspect of, of, of human beings. I think the first aspect has to be that we exist. You know, who, who are we? Whatever. I don't know. But the second aspect is like, well, you know, why are we doing what we do? Um, who is that up to? And for us to conclude that, that it's really up to us rather than the causal past or God or, or just all these influences that come together that aren't in, in our control, I mean, it's just like, it's bewildering. It's like, um, you know, so, so 
again, the purpose of this show, to the extent we understand that free will is an illusion, I, I predict, I would hope, that we can create a much more intelligent world. You know, uh, when you consider so much that our world goes through because we're blaming each other and holding each other accountable, and, uh, and how, how the world could change by our just understanding, um, <clears throat> you know, the, the nature, the, the true nature of reality. I think, I think it would make a, a substantial, uh, it would be, <laughs> not, not, you know, it would be huge. It would be like the biggest change ever, okay? I mean, like, we've had, like, advancements, democracy, various religions and all, but this would be, this would be a much, much more grand, much more expansive, much more influential kind of change. I mean, you know, it's something like humanity has never experienced, you know, in the past. And, um, and again, you have to go back to, like, once, once you make that recognition that free will is an illusion, it's just the idea that, well, all right, life can be wonderful. Life is wonderful with this illusion that we have of free will, with the, with the world as it is. But to the extent that we understand that, that everything is really a movie, that, that what I'm saying right now, you're watching this right now, whatever you did earlier today, what you plan to do later or tomorrow, whatever, that everything that, that we all do is completely predetermined, completely a movie, that makes our lives so much more wonderful in the literal sense of full of wonder. You know, um, and again, it's, um, it's not something that's easy to kind of like, this, this illusion of free will is not easy to break because we've been conditioned um, with it so, so, comp you know, so, so fully, you know, over the years. So anyway, I hope you understand after this ex episode how, you know, you know we, don't, we just don't have a free will, all right? So I'll be back uh, explaining this in other episodes. Thanks.